Greetings, friends. It is I, Riku Khan. What the hell? You can see my whole face and body structure. I've been revealed! Well, I figure I'd try something different this time. So I borrowed a tripod that I just found lying in the sunroom to bring in here. Reason for that? I have all my games right here in alphabetical order. Sort of. And rather than moving them all back out into the sunroom and then back once this video's done, I just figured I can just do this in my room here. This is actually take two of this because I looked at the feedback to make sure everything was working and I didn't hog up my entire memory on this one video. And I wasn't showing the games worth crap. But it's okay, I mean... That's why we always make more than one edit, right? <laughs> oh God, I'm still getting used to this. So, anyway, here's the thing. I can't do the Sega Genesis because my brother sold that a few years ago. That makes me mad to this day. Souls were gifts, and I've learned to never sell your gifts unless... Unless, you know, it's one of those things that you can just switch out for money and they just get something you really want in the end anyway. That way it's like they got you what you really wanted. But video games and all that? Mm-mm. Don't do that. Souls are pricey. I can't also do the Game Boy Advance games because I know from the fact that I do have a lot of Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color games, I just know if I were to go through my little suitcase that has them right now, I wouldn't be able to find them. So instead we're just going to cut straight into my Nintendo stuff, starting with the Nintendo GameCube. And first we're going to start with the letter A, and it is Avatar The Last Airbender. See, this time I'm actually doing it right. I hope. I'm going go in the back. Now let's open it up. Ah, there we go. We got the instruction manual, we got the disc. We got some other things in here too, but they're just advertisements and stuff. This game... I forget how I got this. I just remember playing it... Or, no. How did I get this? I don't remember how I get it, but I remember my first playthrough, I made it to the Earth Temple where that one guy was, that old crazy guy. You know, that same town where they had that cabbage, my cabbages guy. You know, that that guy. I'm, I'm going to throw an image of him on the screen. And I remember there was a certain point in the plot, you couldn't ride Appa. I cannot remember anything. You can't ride him because he needs his uh, straddle to be repaired. And you need like some sort of special leather thing. But if you weren't saving them from the very beginning of the game, you would get stuck and would have to try to grind a certain section for a very rare drop. But then I remember one summer I actually played it. I saved up the leather because I remember that was preventing my progress. And then I beat the game. It was alright. It's a fixed action RPG, but you were able to customize your skill list, which, that's pretty good. If you have some customization, that's better than nothing. And, you know, I don't even know if this is even lore or canon to the actual TV show. The only thing that isn't canon is they had this one character I only remember seeing in the TV show one time. And that's because I don't. I think they were still only on book one because this does take, this does take place. Bleh, this does take place during the near end of book one, so book two wasn't even made yet. But that's enough of the Airbender. I need I need to watch that show again. I remember watching and loving it. I remember seeing the final battle too online. All right, and up next we have. The most cringy thing that I still can't believe is actually relevant. Beyblade V-Force for the GameCube. And we have the bag on here. Believe it or not, Atari made this. See? It says it right there on the instruction manuals. I don't know if I'm getting this right. This the story for this game. Hmm. I remember a friend came over and he had a copy of it. I asked if I could play it, he said yes, and I played it, I thought it was pretty fun. I don't remember how I got this though. I don't know if this was a Christmas gift or a birthday gift. I just remember I got it one day and I just played it. I was very terrible at it, 
So I cheat coded it and beat it because I'm just pathetic and a loser and fat. But that's my story with it. A lot of these, I really don't remember how I got these. <laughs> so yeah, there's Beyblade. Let it rip and out the gas. All right. Now we have an obscure game, Billy Hatcher and the Gent Egg. You know, a some call me Johnny joke because they only spell Gent and not Giant. And it was made by Sega. He had an Easter egg in Shadow the Hedgehog, believe it or not. Uh, I think he's in the racing games? I'm not sure. I thought I had one time read something about they were playing a sequel but it didn't do too well, if anything. I don't know. I mean, how, how much more can you do with a kid who controls a giant egg in a land where a giant rooster's land and evil crows try to stop it? How much more can you do with that, really? Maybe fix the controls, because, you know, I remember the controls weren't that great. Ah, here's the game I remember. Donkey Kong Jungle Beats, the sequel to that rhythm game. I actually have the Kongos underneath my TV right there. And I just remembered on this take that they did remake this for the Wii to get rid of the bongo controls. And yeah, here's the bag right there. These are the instruction manuals, here is the disc. Um, it says they were compatible with the bongos, but I think they were just made for the bongos. You can use the GameCube controller. I remember trying this because I remember a friend of mine came over and at night, for some reason, he decided he wanted to play and beat the entire game. And my mom was trying to sleep, but my mom's room is literally right next door. So she was able to hear all of it and hmm, she wasn't exactly too happy. So I figured, you know, I kind of want to play this game by myself, but I don't want to keep her up at night. And I just remember the controller, was it just felt awkward. Like, I think you had to repeatedly keep pressing the, the joystick in a certain direction just to make Donkey Kong move and out, at all. But, I don't know, I just kind of stopped after that. My friend beat it. It's not that bad, but... I think the Wii version actually makes the controls better, maybe. I don't know. I know nothing about the Wii version. Ah, and here we have Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee. The only Godzilla game I will ever own. Probably a good reason, considering where I was heading with the PS3 PS4. Seriously, what the hell were they thinking making that game? Here's the instruction manual, here's the disc, blah blah blah. I think this was under the same category as Beyblade, where someone came over, they had the game, I played it, and then I somehow got this copy myself. I don't know, I just remember spending all the time playing and getting all the characters by myself. And we occasionally played 1v1. Because, I don't know, I don't know how the 4 player actually works. Alright, and now... Here we have the GameCube starter of all starters, Luigi's Mansion, the game that really needed a sequel and it finally got on the 3DS. I haven't beaten the sequel yet. It's pretty good though. And let's see, here we have the back of it. Uh, yep, just the game only. There was a phase where I just threw out the instruction manual because well, the game had them in the game anyway, so what difference would it make? Of course, now these days, I actually appreciate the instruction manual, and now we've sadly gone away from that. I don't know, I think it's great when games have instruction manuals. Thank God for any box, am I right? Alright, here's an obscure game that's gonna make everyone raise an eyebrow. <sighs> Behold, the only 3D game Mickey Mouse ever got. Disney's Magical Mirror starring Mickey Mouse. Yeah, yeah, this game. Just a disc. 
I mean, it's not a bad game. It's an enjoyable point and click for children. I was a child when I got this, so get off my case before you type in the comments below. But, I don't know. At this day and age, I kind of wish it was a 3D platformer. Because Mickey Mouse didn't really get himself a 3D platformer until the Epic Mickey series. A series I personally find to be the best video games of all time. Well, the first one sp specifically. Sequel, not so much. But that's a game in uh, itself I would love to do a Let's Play on in a review. Because, yeah, it's got some problems, but no game's perfect. I think it's just the greatest game of all time. My friend, everyone else has their own opinions. But my personal favorite game of all time is Epic Mickey. So, here's an interesting one. A movie tie-in game that's actually not god-awful. Madagascar for the GameCube. I remember playing a demo at this at a Best Buy, and I'm like, you know what, I want this for my birthday. And it's not a bad platformer. Oh, it's even got instruction manuals. Sweet. And the disc and everything. But yeah, I remember... This one I definitely remember playing at a Best Buy. And I remember getting it for my birthday. The graphics haven't aged well, let's be real. But then again, I think this was poor to make console, so... Eh. But the controls are actually pretty tight. The only thing I just didn't like was, once you beat the game, the only thing you had to do was look for all the coins 100%, and not even the magnets... And not even the magnet power-up could find them all. You were pretty much on your own. And I don't think to this day there has been a single guide out there to actually get all the coins. But no, my luck, you probably didn't get anything for it anyway. I just remember on my very first playthrough, I hogged up all the coins ever. And then like in the shop, I just bought all the health upgrades. <laughs> it's, it's not a bad this is not a bad game. I mean, if you do see it, maybe give it a try if you own a PS2 or a GameCube. But, I mean, just be warned of the graphics. It hasn't aged well. It's still not terrible, though. Alright. Alright, 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 alright. Oh, I see two games that aren't in order, but I can fix that in a minute. A friend of mine named Film Flim Two something whatever. I'll just link him down in the description down below. He is doing the Crash Bandicoot series. I never grew up with the PlayStation One, so I never actually knew about Crash Bandicoot nor the history of this character, Spyro. And yes, we're looking at the glitchiest, buggiest version of them all. Enter the Dragonfly. I remember seeing a commercial for it, asking it for Christmas, and I got it. And let's check the Oh, I got the instructions back then too. Hmm, pretty good. This is one of those two games that came out during the PS2 era that wasn't that good for Crash or Spyro. Their next games aren't so bad though. This is the better version of the two. Well, I think this came on the Xbox, I forget. But this was definitely the better version because at quicker load times. But it sacrificed the frame rate consistency, unfortunately. And this is a pretty rushed, glitchy game, unfortunately. I remember one time, though, I actually beat the entire game in 100 percent it. You got jack shit for it, but you still don't get jack shit for 100 percenting anything. It's not too bad of a game, but comparing to the trilogy in the next game I'm about to pull up, it's not the best, at least. I would definitely recommend you kind of skip it, but if you are curious of what not to do, this is the game. But it's not ungodly bad, like Sonic 06, or even worse, Sonic Boom. At least with 06, that's, that game's actually fun to break. Alright, and now we compare this game to the much better sequel, Spiral A Hero's Tale. Huh. Electronic Game Monthly. Is that even around anymore? Yeah, whatever. But yeah, I remember just getting excited for this game because it's like you're not only playing as Spiral, but you're playing as four, five other characters. No. 
four other characters besides Spyro, and that includes Sparks himself. It's, it's not that bad of a game. This was much better developed, though, for all the consoles that came out for it. And, well, sadly, after that, Spiral pretty much didn't get a good game. You know why? Because after they made a hero's tale, someone, for some ungodly reason, thought this needed it to be a thing. The Legend of Spiral Trilogy. But I only owned the first one. Why do I only own the first one? Because I thought this was just generic, boring, predictable, and not horrible, but not that great either. I mean, yes, I do appreciate the fact that they gave you a health bar. Mana system, eh. But the fact that you remove the currency, the likable characters, you're just trying to reboot the whole series for some godly unknown reason, Amy Spyro, a cartoonish dragon who was just who was just going out his way to save the day from bad guys into some prophet legendary hero just because he's a purple dragon. I'm sorry, why are you trying to give a cartoon dragon a in-depth storyline? And yeah, I got all that crap, but it's just like why? Why'd you take the Spiral series down this way? It didn't need to happen. And the third one, I, I didn't even bother with the other two games, just because this game, I just was bored with it. It's not awful, but it's not that great either. And don't even get me started on the Skylander series. <sighs> Alright, that's the bad part done. Let's continue on. Uh, here we have... Ah. Mario Superstar Baseball. Hey guys, remember when Mario sports games were actually fun and they actually tried? Yeah, I do too. And this is one of them. Hmm, this is a beefy game. Oh, that's why. I have the instruction manuals and everything. I definitely like the sequels, single player though, a lot more. But, this game wasn't so bad. It's great. I haven't played this in years, nor have I looked at the gameplay, but... It's baseball, and it's got some mini-games, and it's got an adventure mode where you just go around and beat other people and get them to recruit into your baseball team, so then you eventually fight against Bowser and his son, who would then become playable, and then you beat the... I, I don't know. It's been forever since I've played it, but it's not that bad. I definitely prefer the sequel, though. But that's for the Wii section. And now, we have my second Pac-Man game I've ever owned. The first one was Pac-Man the Pac-Man 2 The New Adventures for the Genesis. I know, what an obscure title. I was only familiar with Pac-Man via this Miss Pac-Man for the Sega Genesis, but here we have Pac-Man World 2 that's also bundled with Pac-Man Versus, the only time you hear Mario's voice in a Pac-Man game until Smash Bros. 4. And, yeah, you got all that here. I think this was like a handout at a GameStop or whatever at the time. And, yeah, I have both discs right here. So if I had link cables, I could play this game. Why this case? Whatever. I remember I could never beat this game as a kid. And one of these days, I might just with a Let's Play. Try to be it, try to 100% it, even though you get nothing for it. I actually remember one time at a Walmart, they used to have a Pac-Man World Trilogy for the PS for the PS2, where it was all three Pac-Man World games in the one box, and you had all three games. Well, I never got that, and I've only played two. I tried watching three online just to get the idea of how that trilogy ended, and the graphics looked very boring. Well, this was very colorful and exciting. Adventure! Alright. That's enough of the obscure stuff, and now I'm going to pause and make sure that I haven't filled up my memory card yet, so, one second. Alright, well, apparently my camcorder's got like an hour and 40 minutes left until it's full, so, let's just move on to the next game. Here's a game that I'm sure people really love and wish was ported to the 3DS like the rumors speculate. 
and well, it's also got two other sequels that most people don't like, or three sequels that most people don't like, but I guess I just have bad taste because I really love the other three games that I have to this. Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door for the GameCube. Classic, I remember playing a demo at a Sam's Club, loved it, got it for Christmas. With the strategy guide. Wow, I actually kept the instruction manuals for this one. Sweet. Yeah. It's a thousand year door. I mean, everyone loves it. The only thing I didn't love about it, and everyone else agrees with me, chapter five. What's chapter five? No, chapter four. Chapter four, nobody likes. But the equivalent exchange is, while chapter four sucked the big one, you also got arguably the best party member of the entire game. Yeah, I'm not gonna... I'm just not gonna dispute against that party member. Don't know if it's transgender, I don't know if it's a woman. Don't know, don't care. She, th she sets things on fire, that's all you need to know. I do own Paper Mario 1 via the Virtual Console. I still think this is the better game. Just as me, Paper Mario 1 does have its charms though, like, it's a very, very close second. Like, maybe if it came out a few years later, handled betterly, better, maybe I could say it's better than this one, but... Because yeah, chap pa Paper Mario 1 does have good chapters in it. Like, I don't think there's a single bad chapter in that one, but I just... I don't know, I grew up with this one first, I think it controls a bit better, it's not so stiff with the time hit, but that's just me. I definitely love, you know, Super Paper Mario, Sticker Star, and Color Splash. Even if no one likes the other two, I, I just still think they were great games. I definitely do think, though, that they need to go back to the formula with a turn, like, just to get the graphical fidelity of Color Splash, mix it with this combat system in here, and you'll have the greatest Paper Mario game ever made. As well as good partners, too. You definitely gotta throw that in. But that's enough of that. Here we have one of my brother's two GameCube games. Pokemon Coliseum. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he kept the instruction manual or not. Nope, he kept the disc, though. It's Pokemon Coliseum. Just imagine third generation in 3D like Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, but with third gen and it's nothing but double battles the game with a plot. And also the coolest looking main character that we'll ever get. You just, you can't beat this guy. I think his official name is Wes? I don't know. I thought it was, I thought it was a fun game. I look at it now, and yeah, the double battle system was just so ungodly slow. Thank God they're speeding up in the current games, I'll tell you that much. But, yeah. I just remember my brother getting it, I play it, I remember at some, I was in, I was at some campsite, and my ex-father brought his TV set with him, with a junior, and I just played and beat it there. I did it 100%, but... Do you even get anything besides accessing the actual game cards? No. And now, we're on to his other GameCube game that he owned. The sequel, XD Gale of Darkness. And we got skins for the GameCube with it. I think I still have it online currently. Yeah, it's the same game. Some minor tweaks to the system derpy character, if you ask me. I actually remember Chugga Conroy saying in his Let's Play of this one that they act, they were actually planning on making Wes from their previous game be the main villain, but then that got... I don't know how they would make it too predictable, but... Did he cut the instruction manual for this one? Nope. Cool disc, though. But, yeah. There were some changes in it that I did like. Like, I did like the fact that all the trainers could actually have more than one shot of Pokemon. I thought that was a cool concept. It's like, why are you limiting yourself to just one? There's supposed to be powerhouses. But then there was the drawbacks where if you failed to catch them, they would run away and end up with Mayor B. 
But again, it's just Colosseum. My brother got this. I ended up beating it, surprisingly. Only in this one, I actually did 100% it, and you got nothing for it. Makes you really wish developers would actually give you something for 100%ing stuff, don't it? Alright, back to my games now. That's it. Here we have my. F actually, no, this is my second ever Rayman game. Rayman 3 Hoodlum Havoc. I do own two, and I do own one for the Game Boy Advance. AKA arguably the worst one. Did I keep the instruction manual for this one? Nope. Cool, let's go. This I remember playing the demo, and I ended up getting it for Easter. Then I got into trouble because I told my father at the time to shut up. Because I was trying to play this and enjoy it, and I didn't really want to eat anything. I deserved the punishment I got for by not playing for the rest of the day because I was a rude little shit. I've grown up now, and well, I really want to do a let's play of this game, as well as Rayman 2. Rayman 1, that's going to be the Origins version because I am not going to handle difficulty spikes up the ass. For a game that you can only fight the final boss one time, in or and in order to do that, you got 100%. No spank you. <laughs> no. <laughs> but now we're gonna get to my actual first Rayman game. This was the shared game between me and my brother, Rayman Arena, and it was later ported to the PS1 under Rayman something else, where they took out some characters, replaced them with something else. I don't get why they made it for the PlayStation 1, because at that time, the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox were currently up and running. But yeah, this was the first game my brother and I got together. And I actually unlocked everything but the Dark Raymond costume. Because those ra because those modes are a bitch. A total bitch to do. And now here comes two games I'm pretty sure that are that much of a shocker. The first one was Sonic Adventure DX for the GameCube version, and only for the GameCube version until the HD remake releases. Yeah, I remember this story very well. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle actually came out first for the GameCube. Make sure you're getting all those. And then this was, and then this came out. Now I'm getting very excited for it. And then I just remember, for being a very good boy at summer camp, my mom took me to the GameStop and she got me this game and the and the guidebook for it. The guidebook's actually kind of useless, let's be real. Because the only thing you can get with the guidebook is how to do the missions and where to get the power-ups, which is only useful for big. I mean, back then when I was a kid, they were very useful. But for the stages, they were just completely worthless. But I just remember getting this for being a good boy at summer camp, and I've beaten it multiple times at this point on the GameCube. And now I have a silent playthrough of it on my gaming channel. I would really love to make that to a Let's Play, but... I'd rather not do the same game over and over and over again. And of course, you know, we're gonna skip to that one, and now we're gonna do Sonic 2 Battle, my first 3D Sonic game. I have ever, I have only owned Sonic 2, well actually no, Sonic 2 I think was my brother's game. He owned the six pack game that had Sonic 1 in it, and then for my for Christmas one year, I got my own Sega Genesis, the small version, not the big black one, like the very small and the third model that had Sonic 3 included. They didn't include the and Knuckles part. In fact, I didn't know anything about the and Knuckles part until the PC trilogy that I actually got. Which was just Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles, and Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Kind of an odd trilogy for a PC, I guess, but whatever. I also got Sonic R and Sonic CD for the PC that year too, but that's besides the point. And I definitely know I don't have the instruction manual for that one, but yeah. This was my first ever 3D Sonic game. I just remember being impressed with the fact that 
I could actually turn Sonic around and have him look right at me. Oh, how I miss my youth. And of course, I also have a play silent playthrough of that on my gaming channel. And I didn't game go for 100% because the only thing you get for it at this point is just costumes. And except for maybe Rouge, the costumes aren't really worth it. And now we're gonna go to a bit of obscure one. Well, actually, no. We're gonna first do the game that came out after it, Sonic Heroes. The game that I watch a guy literally break, especially with Team Rose, and I was like, how in God's name do you do that? And, yeah. This is my second 3 Sonic game. And... Yeah, I just remember seeing it coming out, and I, and I asked my mom, I was like, hey, can you get this for me? She's like, sure. I'm like, okay, great, thank you. And then I played it, and then I did beat it a few times. I remember <laughs> one day I was at my ex-father's place, and I was supposed to be studying for a test. Instead, what I did was, I played Sonic Heroes all day, from the start to almost to the finish. I played all the teams but Team Dark last, and I then, and then by the time I was getting close to being Team Dark, I had to go to bed. I had no GameCube on my ex-father's GameCube that he had over there for me, so any progress I had, gone. And <laughs> I did get an F, and yeah, I was stupid back then, I'm, I'm stupid now, but I'm not that stupid. Homework is more important than video game people, even though some people are making a living off it, but that's a lecture for another time. Sonic Gems Collection. I remember wanting this game because it had Metal Sonic on it, and I thought, oh, this is gonna be a this was gonna be a cool Sonic game that's gonna have Metal Sonic involved. And you know, it was a compilation I realized in the back. And I remember wanting this for my birthday, but then I saw a Target was on sale. I was like, hey, Mom, can I get this? And she's like, sure, I guess, but I'm going to have to get you something else for your birthday. I'm like, I don't care. I just want to play this. And, yeah. This was only for the GameCube in America. Everywhere else, I think it got for the PS2 only. Yeah, it's got Sonic CD, Sonic the Fighters, which I've never played before until then, and Sonic R. Which, this is probably arguably the best version because you can actually make your turns sharper. Even, it's got great music, but it's not great racing music. And it's got instruction manuals, a disc, and what the hell is this? Oh yeah, and hey, they advertise Sonic Rush on the back on there. Sweet, I actually do own that, but that's spoilers for later. And yeah, it had a lot of artwork you can unlock, but it only had two games you could unlock. I'm pretty sure there is a collection game out there for like the PS2 that's way better than this because it's got more than just a few. All the games that's got Sonic and Metal Sonic involved and the two Tails games that were very obscure, but that's besides the point. And now we move on to a, well, compared to other games of this series up to this point, this one's not so good. SpongeBob SquarePants Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. It's not awful, it's just a generic 3D platformer where you collect things and gain power-ups to help you throughout the game. Yeah, I mean... It's not horrible, but if you were to compare this to Battle for Bikini Bottom, which is a game I'd love to get at this point, but that's that's long gone now. This is obviously not that good. And for God's sake, they got the narrator to you know do a different voice altogether, a different narrator voice altogether. And it's it's not awful, but I skip it personally. And I. And now we go to my very first GameCube game that my brother and I both own. See, at the time, Costco, or Santa's Club, yeah, we, it was Santa's Club, 
they had this bundled where if you bought the GameCube, you were given an extra controller, a memory card, and Star Fox Adventures. The black sheep of the family. Whether it's because of Crystal Fox, or just because it's a gameplay different altogether, I don't know. My brother and I both got this bundle. Not at the same time, mind you. My brother first got it, I think, for his birthday. And so we had to share them, play our games on it. And then, I think, like, after my, mo my room got renovated from when I was a grown-up kid, for some reason, they got me my own GameCube that had this bundle. I even got the guidebook. I think my brother owns the guidebook, but I got it, I think, somewhere in my book collection over there and I, ne I never played any other Star Fox gaming except for this one and to this day I still have it. I'm not saying 64 or 0 or 1 and 2 are bad but there's just not my type of game. It's a 3D or you're basically just on rail shooting with some other variances throughout the other games but I, I just I'm just not into the series. And I don't think my brother and I have ever beaten this, but why would we? It's not that good of an adventure game, really. Now here's a game I'm sure some people remember and some probably don't even like. Tac 2, The Staff of Dreams. I don't remember how or why I got this game. I thought it was fun, though. Difficult, as later on in the game. In fact, I actually made it to the finale, but I just couldn't be it because it was just bullshit. Like, you had to, like, trade shots to make sure nobody died, but then you would somehow die anyway. I don't know. i never beaten it. I thought it was fun. Had some minor references to other things. Never played Tech 1, so I thought it was PS2 only. And then there was a co-op Tech game, but I never played. This was the only game I ever played in the franchise, and I don't know if anyone actually misses this series. I thought this one was fun. Although I didn't like the fact that they advertised the ability to turn into animals and that wasn't available until halfway through the game. Oops. But, we're done with that. And now, we are going to be introduced to my very first Legend of Zelda game. Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. Yes, 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 yes. This is the original version. I might consider getting the HD version though because it's much better. It fixes a lot of issues that this game had. I didn't think there were big deals at the time. I actually keep the instruction manuals for this. I would be very impressed if I did. I don't think I did. Hmm, let me see. Oh, yep, I did. That's incredible. And of course, they also have the Game Boy Advance link in there, but... All you really got with that was the Tino statues. I can't believe that guy got his own games in Japan, but... Then again, are we Americans really asking for it? No, didn't think so. But yes, I never played a Zelda game my entire life until the GameCube. This was my first one. I just remember playing it at demos at a game store. And I remember just loving it, I think. And then I just got it for Christmas one day with the guidebook. I've beaten it plenty of times on both versions, even though nothing changes. And as I said, you know, um, I would probably get the HD version one day, not only for the better graphics, but a lot of changes they did just to make the game a lot better. These are some things in here that I find negative to this day, but back then I didn't think nothing of it. Because it was just a grand adventure. Alright, well enough of that savvy shit. Let's move on to my last GameCube game. Actually, no, second to last. The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventure. Yes, one of the few co-op Zelda games that ever exist. For the GameCube. Unfortunately, in order to co-op, you had to dual link with the Game Boy Advances. Pretty much the... Wii U gamepad before the Wii was even made. 
and here's the instruction manuals and the disc. I just remember soloing this all the time, and then I just remember getting stuck in a dungeon. So I wanted a strategy guide for it, and my aunt, who was alive at the time, she had a boyfriend who worked at a game store, and he shipped me a guidebook. Of course, now I just figured out the only way to beat that little puzzle I was stuck, well, I was stuck at. You just throw the boomerang diagonally. I was stupid. Still I am. But I did eventually beat it all by myself. This is one of the few games though that actually changes depending on how many players play with you. And I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Johnny and Game Explain did a series on this and their map ended up being completely different because they were playing with a friend. I would recommend checking that series out if you want some giggling, but... Oh, I also think the Runaway, the Runaway guys also did this series. And they made everything complex to record. Oh my god. But, anyway, now we're down to my last GameCube game. And then I gotta stop and render all this stuff on my computer. Just so I can get all the memory back. And that... Is Beautiful Joe. Yep. I own the sequel for the PS2, but... Well, Kakalon doesn't think the series is too good. And yeah, I got that and I got this. I've never beaten this game. I remember it being difficult, but fun. I sucked back then and I could probably beat it today. Probably. But is there really a point playing it now these days? But I, I don't know. Probably just to say I beat it, but that's about it. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed part one of my Nintendo section of the game collections. Next time we're going to be talking about my DS and 3DS titles, and in part three, we got the Wii and the Wii U, and somewhat the Switch. Actually, no, the Switch I'm going to hold off to later until I get more games for that, because I only got three with a fourth one coming in. So, this has been Riku Khan, and I'll see you in the next one.